what are the different aspects for designing for a new idea? Let's say uh, for a startup again, uh, who, who has no funding, which has no funding yet, and uh, they're building an MVP, and they uh, since they have no funding and uh, and it's just a group of friends doing something, they can't really afford design yeah. because uh, designers are. Uh, like they're not in abundance yet, but uh, designers uh, for them will be expensive, and design agency will be more expensive uh, for them. So what 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 do these group of three or four founders, or whatever the number is, uh, should do to you know get the product product to that MVP so that the investor is actually interested in investing in it? Okay. Um, to answer your question uh, um, in terms of uh, you know a startup. Uh, or uh, an entrepreneur who has a good idea, um, you know, I mean, when you know, right, that there are different aspects to any product, right, there are finances, there's marketing, there's design, there's functionality, development, right, uh, an MVP cannot be built or a product cannot be built uh, without any of them. I mean, you, you need all of them to build, to build a product. Okay. And um, I guess the focus has to be given to all of them. Um, however, having said that, um, some of the stakeholders, uh, the background that they come from, some of them come from the financial background, some of them come from the you know um, software background. So whatever they're comfortable with, they are ready to take it on themselves. And uh, what they're not comfortable with, they would like to seek experts' advice. Now. Uh, to all of them, budget and timelines is a major constraint. It is a uh, you know, huge thing, especially for the Indian entrepreneurs. So yeah. The budget is a big constraint. Considering that, now if if uh, if those if the stakeholders cannot approach a design expert, I recommend them to do a course in design. And there are a lot of online courses available on design, especially when it comes to user experience design. There are a lot of courses that are available and you can uh, do one of those courses. Uh, but primarily, again, uh, they need to understand their users. Yeah. Uh, end of the day, the designs have to be user-centric. And um, uh, most of the entrepreneurs uh, who I have interacted with, uh, they, have, they focus a lot on market research. But um, um, the pressure builds on, and then uh, the focus on users and user research kind of uh, you know uh, deviates a bit of, uh, along the way. So if we can focus on the users, understand the requirements, make the design user centric, most of the uh, application will be simplified. However, uh, I I think they will need uh, a few designers' help. To do the aesthetics of the product. Probably okay. for that, you know, they can always hire a few freelancers uh, yeah. to make their, uh, uh, you know, to take care of the aesthetics of the product. So, where do you think the freelance community uh, is placed in this design ecosystem of India? Uh, uh, in India, in the current situation, freelancers um, have a lot of scope. Oh. Um, I believe the future is there for them. Okay. Um, uh, uh, it, it, it is becoming a friendly environment everywhere. Um, um, earlier, you know, people would refuse to share their ideas, but uh, with the advent of a uh, lot of uh, online applications and online platforms, uh, all the designers are going to share their ideas with the rest of the industry. Yeah. Um, there are a lot of workshops happening, um, there's a lot of discussions happening. So there are enough platforms for designers to either exhibit their work, um, ex uh, you know, um, uh, exhibit their ideas or uh, you know, go listen to others and resonate with them. So um, the, I feel like the design community in India is slowly coming together. Yeah. And uh, that, that's a huge uh, um, healthy change in the Indian market because uh, it's always nice to learn from each other. Yeah. So that's uh, irrespective of whether like they are freelancer or like a yes, full time. Irrespective of whether they're freelancer or it could be as good as a design agency. Yeah. We appreciate uh, 
ideas from anywhere and uh, I think people are willing to uh, you know, listen to others and uh, you know, change themselves for better. Yeah. So, so you have worked for, uh, you, have, you have designed for a lot of startups, uh, budgeted or like non-budgeted, non, non but you have also designed for big organizations which are with big budgets. So what is the difference between designing these two? Like we have covered the designing for startups. So probably you can focus and tell me a little more about how it is uh, about designing for organizations, like huge MNCs. Um, primarily, the differences are, um, you know, when you're designing for startups, the stakeholders are limited. You're technically working with three to four main stakeholders and their opinions matter, only matter at the end of the day. Yeah. So, uh, but when you're working with bigger organizations, it is the, uh, the project or product managers that you normally work with and then uh, there's a, the management uh, kind of I mean the, the approach we, we the approach to the management only happens in the later stages of the you know the design work right okay. um, considering that uh, you know we hear directly from stakeholders in terms of smaller organizations and startups. Uh, we we listen to their ideas. We listen to their constraints. We uh, we you know it helps us as a design agency. We it helps us empathize with them okay. and understand their constraints. Understand uh, uh, you know uh, why they're asking for something. And um, and at the same time, since we also do a lot of user research, we understand the users. And uh, um, in smaller organizations, we also try to approach the sales and marketing teams and understand uh, their pain points. And also, we uh, directly approach the development team and understand, uh, you know, their timelines and what are their expectations. So, in smaller organizations, we are working with the uh, entire team um, and understand, uh, you know, what their expectations are, what their pain points are, you know, what their vision is for them three to five years and uh, along with that solid information we understand the users and user behavior so this gives us um, you know um, uh, definitely a solid foundation to build our design on uh, whereas in bigger organizations it's kind of different right it's more mature the process is more mature the way they approach the design is also very mature because they would have done their own market research they would have done their own user research yeah. um, there are people who primarily focus on what features have to go into the next phase and stuff so they are very organized and they, their vision and uh, is very clear they have clarity as to how they want to break down the future of the product um, so that kind of um, helps us a lot also in many ways um, but um, necessarily we will not get access to their senior management not their marketing and sales teams um, sometimes uh, you know it, it, it leads to a place where we will have to do multiple iterations on the design because we would not have understood the expectations of the other teams. So since there's a process set for an organization, is, does it become a more difficult to design for them? Like they are really strict about what, they're, what they need, uh, there's a little, very small margin or there's a little scope of experimentation that you get when, you, when you're designing for an organization as compared to a startup? Not really, not really. We have worked with varied organizations, we have worked with a lot of uh, um, prominent um, organizations out there, um, not really. I mean, uh, they um, they do value the inputs that we get. They do understand where we are coming from because yes. it is always we always get to the whiteboard and we explain them uh, as to uh, why we are uh, choosing uh, a certain workflow or a certain way of solving the problem, right? End of the day, big organizations come to us because they trust us. Yeah. They believe in us that they will, we will solve the problem for them. And because of that trust, uh, we do make sure that uh, you know our points come across because um, primarily their goal and our goal is to see the success of the project. Yeah. 
So they understand that we believe in the success of the project and we don't believe in impressing a certain segment of people hmm. uh, in that particular organization. So uh, people value that. People value uh, um, that we believe that their success is our success or the success of the project is our success. So when we express our opinions, they do take it very seriously. So um, yeah, I mean, hope I answered your question, but um, yeah, yeah, definitely. Uh, so but now, now, now that you have onboarded uh, a client, uh, you, have, you have accepted the pitch and uh, what, what is the next step? What is your execution model? And how do you get started with the project? Okay, um, once we onboard a client, first of all, we try to understand uh, why they come up with that idea. We mm -hmm. definitely uh, understand the unique selling point because uh, uh, when it is in, uh, uh, for example, if I have to take a healthcare industry, okay. uh, you see a lot of ideas floating around. And sometimes when you're looking at them from you know, far off, they all seem similar. Uh, but that's not the case. They are actually trying to solve a certain problem for a certain segment of people. Okay. So we first try to understand their idea. We try to understand their unique selling point. And then we try to understand what are the features that they want in the application. Because end of the day, along with that unique selling point, they also want to give some add-ons that yeah. will make the product more viable and feasible for people to use. Yeah. So we first understand that. And once we understand the stakeholder requirements, then we try to understand the segment of users that they are trying to target. Now, uh, when uh, we understand the users, then we uh, try to approach those users with certain user questionnaire and we try to understand the users per se because we do think that we know the users but obviously we don't because every user behaves differently in a different context. So we go talk to people, we understand, we try and understand what their expectations are from the project, right? Yeah. After we are done with the user interviews, we do instance and heuristic analysis of the user behaviors and uh, the requirements. Once we have the uh, user requirements also clear, we compare and see uh, if there is deviation between the stakeholder expectations and requirements and the user expectations and requirements. When, and we take it back to the stakeholders. Uh, while this is going on, in parallel, we also try to understand the competitors. So for some of the ideas, they might not be direct competitors. However, we do, uh, you know, uh, we do analyze the indirect competitors and we are, try to see what they have done till now and where the future is for them. After all this, right, we come up with personas and, uh, you know, uh, uh, after the person as we work on use cases in our aid. So that is our design approach uh, uh, to solve a, a problem. Uh -huh. So it's, it's like you solve the psychological part of a problem first and then you get on to the pixels. Yes, yeah. uh, primarily so, if you don't, honestly, I personally believe that if you don't empathize with the stakeholder, if you don't empathize the, uh, with the users that the stakeholder is building an application for, uh, you can never put yourself in their shoes. And uh, if you don't put yourself in their shoes, you will never be able to think like them. And if yeah. you don't think like them, we will not be able to solve the problems for them. So, now that the project is in the company and you're working working on it, on it you're leading it, what is the team formation uh, for the project? And how does this team function? What are the different types of personalities uh, in this team? Yeah, it depends upon how, uh, what's the scope of the project. Depending okay. upon the scope of the project, uh, we, we do decide the team. However, as a general rule, we do have uh, uh, interaction designer on board. We do have UI designer on board. We have the, the strategists on board. 
uh, we have project managers on board who constantly look at timelines and make sure that we are sticking to what we promised. Yeah. Um, this is from the design part, but if the stakeholders are also interested in the front end development, then there is a team of uh, developers that are involved from the initial state so okay. that they are aware of the design evolution, they understand the users equally as the designer. And uh, with the design developers, there is a development lead and the head uh, who actually participates in most of the conversations with the stakeholders. All right. So, uh, how how does this team approach design? Like, uh, I guess every team member has to go through a little a little bit of design at least to you know get to because every project is different and you need to get into it to get what to understand the pro the product that is needed. So, how how does how do these members of the team approach design? So normally uh, we do have a kickoff meeting for every project. That would be our first uh, uh, interaction of the team's first interaction with the stakeholders where we try to understand um, their uh, unique selling point, um, their expectations and their requirements. And uh, once we have that, the interaction design team um, does their analysis of the features and then they take on from there and they do their user research and also the competitive analysis and then uh, at the end of the research phase they come up with the use cases and the uh, information architecture. Um, what they do is uh, they share this with the rest of the teams. They share it with the development team probably, they share it with the project manager to make sure uh, you know everybody is aware of the research that has been done. Now, after that, um, or in parallel, the UI designer also tries to understand uh, the expectations of the target audience in terms of the aesthetics of the design. Yeah. And they go ahead and do their own uh, research uh, in terms of competitors and understand where the competitors fall and how the stakeholder wants to project his app to the users and uh, what kind of aesthetics they want to put in. Again, uh, considering their brand guidelines and the brand then, right? Uh, so they do, in parallel, they do the UI research. And the development team uh, tries to understand the sector, they try to understand the industry, and they also try to do competitive analysis of uh, how, uh, you know, how the competitors have built their app and what technology they have used. Um, along with it, I mean, these all happen in parallel, but uh, at, after, at the end of the, um, you know, the research phase, everybody converges in the way to have a discussion again with the stakeholder. Um, also along the path, as the interaction designers are coming up with the workflows, uh, they do have discussions with the UI designers and the development team uh, to explain to them that these are the expectations uh, in terms of the workflows and um, especially the development team goes and does their research in terms of uh, different technological components uh, that are needed uh, to solve the problem uh, in terms of function. 